Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. We have been reviewing the Alpha Antennas Hextenna, and I put a video up in there that showed that the antenna worked fine as a dipole. We didn't get good results uh, as a uh, vertical, and there was a problem with the hub that holds everything on uh, rather badly cracking when it fell over. Well, I wrote an email to the fellow who owns um, Alpha Antennas, and he was very delighted with the feedback, especially when I showed that by putting a screw all the way through, it kept it from doing that. And he came out with the black hub. Now this black hub is identically electrical to is identical electrically to the gray hub except that it's sturdier the uh, gray hub weighs 12 ounces and this weighs 14.8 so there's a lot more material in there and then on this one the screws they're actually bolts hex head bolts go through to nuts on the other side. And so you can pull this thing down very, very tightly. Now, we put the, we put the antenna back together um, in the dipole configuration and measured things just to make sure it hadn't changed and very pleased with the results. And then we went ahead and put the thing up in a vertical configuration. In the last video, I didn't have much luck with that. But this points out that when you put it in a vertical uh, position, it tells you how long the counterpoise should be. Okay. Now, it occurred to me that uh, I was treating this thing wrong. This thing's atop a tripod, which is about two feet off the ground on the back deck. So this is not a ground level vertical. It is an elevated vertical, and so it needs tuned um, radials. Now we put one radial in at the length that was suggested here. It only uh, it says for one, I would go with two per band stretched in opposite directions. Now note that this says, for example, the counterpoise should be 18 feet 2 inches. Uh, we ended up, when we shortened that a foot, that the antenna worked better. The vertical element, 13 feet 2 inches, we had to pull it down by about 6 inches to get the thing to give us good SWR results on uh, 20. So these two charts show uh, what we get with the nano VNA, the first one is in the horizontal dipole configuration, and it comes down very good. It's under two to one across the band, under that even. Whereas uh, in the vertical configuration, which this chart is, shows that it is a little bit worse. Now, here's the reason for that. Um, vertical antennas have a characteristic impedance of about 30 ohms. You can read the actual impedance on the chart uh, for the different frequencies that we have in there. But uh, they have a characteristic impedance on the order of 30 ohms, whereas a dipole has a characteristic impedance up to 70 ohms, probably at this height more like 50. So you're going to get a better SWR going into the dipole than you are into the vertical. Now, does that mean it will not work? No, it will work fine. Um, I would take all of these lengths on this little card, which is the sum total of the instructions, and um, these are starting points, okay? Starting points. And you need an antenna analyzer really to see what's going on. If you don't have an antenna analyzer, you can use the method I used for years with just an SWR meter and take readings uh, all the way across the band every 10 kilohertz or something like that and get your chart. Whereas if you're using the vector network analyzer, the nano VNA, 
uh, there is a companion piece of software that just shows it and we showed you the diagrams of that earlier. Okay, now it's interesting. I told Steve, the guy who runs the company, about the problem we had with his hub when the antenna fell over. And um, what we had done is put screws that went all the way through to hold it together. And he really liked that idea, so it has been remachined so that this Allen head screw goes all the way through and holds the thing together. So we did the big test. And in this video, you can see where I go up and pretend I'm the wind, and I knock this thing over. And um, this is what broke this box up. But in this case right here, we had no trouble with the black box at all. So I really commend Steve for being so responsive to reviewers to try and make this product the best that he, he can. Okay, so now one other thing that he noted, he said, our engineer was working on decommissioning the gray hex 10 hub today and found it was being printed with adaptive, which is 70% infill instead of 100% infill. This means the gray housing was printed incorrectly and when printed correctly, does have the same tensile strength of the black housing I sent to you. This solves the mystery as to why the gray unit you received broke. Okay, so he likes the idea of the, the through things that, that hold it together well. So in this sense, uh, the antennas, um, a good dipole for uh, parks on the air, something like that, uh, once you get out more than five or six feet away from the tripod, you'll find that the, uh, the elements go way up above where other people would be. And you can run it as a dipole without uh, having to... Um, you can run it as a dipole without having radials. Now, um, we found that when we were lengthening and shortening the antenna, it's best to do it not out at the tip, but at the base. Because um, you can't put a fully lengthened element into that odd angle in there. You have to put it in there and then stretch it out all the way. We measured the stretch out as being uh, 17 foot 8 inches is the total element length for those. Whereas on 20 we wanted 16 feet 11 and a half inches so we shortened it by eight and a half inches at the base by pulling that first element down into the other. As it turned out that wasn't enough we had to do more. So again take these readings here with as a starting point that you can do. We did not try this thing on um, various uh, and sundry other frequencies. It worked great on 20 and there's nothing to keep it from working great on the higher frequencies because it's still the same principle. Now we've got a little problem to fix here. See how tight that is right there? Very tight. This is very tight. This one obviously is not. There is space in there. So we're going to tighten that. So I'll give this to you. And we're going to tighten it. Oh man, look at that. Now, if you look at it right there, there's no gap. Now, don't try to tighten it from the outside because, see, this ring in here has got these wires attached, and it'll just happily pull those wires all the way around. So we've got everything nice and tightened up on here. This is the one for attaching to the um, tripod. And this could be... 
a little tighter, but we won't. Okay, so I mean what we see in here basically is a center conductor goes to this one for the dipole, ground goes to this other side for the dipole, and then the center conductor goes up to this one for the vertical, and this is ground where you put the counterpoise on it. So, do I recommend this antenna? Yeah, with the new Black Hub, it's a lot better antenna. Um, it's not like a buddy pole. A buddy pole can only take so much power. You can pump the full legal limit power through this thing. Um, and this would make a great POTA thing because that antenna will bring <laughs> people to take a look and ask what's going on because of the, the unusual arc of the antenna elements. So there you have it. It's a good antenna. I like the fact that they responded to what a reviewer found uh, that was an issue with one of their parts. They corrected it. I had this thing in my hand two days later. Okay, so now I have to ship this back and I will do that after I make sure that there are no further issues with the video. Please take a look at patreon.com slash ke0og and see if there's a way there that you would like to support this channel. If you like this channel, please subscribe to it and click the bell. Also leave a comment, although I will tell you I normally don't get to read the comments very much. You know, with a thousand videos up, it's hard to do that. Um, but I do read emails that are sent to me. Send an email to ask Dave, all one word, at arrl.org, org. Okay, and that will get to me, and you can attach things to it. I really would appreciate it if you'd, in sending the questions, do a, a sort of a who, what, when, where, why type of approach so that I can get the big picture. And speaking of pictures, pictures really do help me understand what's going on. Um, I get an awful lot of questions where they want to do grounding differently from the way they should, and they want my blessing for what they're doing. They're not going to get it, uh, because the grounding needs to be done the way it should be done. See my, uh, video number eight, Ask Dave number eight, and, uh, also the league has a book on grounding called, uh, Grounding and Bonding for the Radio Amateur second edition, make sure you get the second edition. It's available from the league or Amazon, or you can get it on Kindle. So there you have it. Again, until we next meet, 73.